What's up, everybody? Are you overwhelmed by the never-ending supply of depressing bad news? Well, let's refuel our tanks with seven recent positive stories. This is Getting News for the month of November 2020. Double amputee five-year-old Tony Hudgel raises more than $1 million for charity with Beautiful Act is the Getting News headline courtesy of Rob Pachetta of 7 News Australia, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Five-year-old Tony Hudgel lost both his legs after suffering abuse from his biological parents as a newborn, and that left him on life support at London's Children's Hospital. Now he's raised over a million dollars for this hospital that saved his life, and he's done so by walking nine kilometers. Caroline Gormley, associate director of fundraising at the hospital, said, His strength and the generosity of everyone who donated will make such an incredible difference. He has made everyone at Evelina London so proud. His adoptive mother, Paula Hudgel, stated, It is incredible to think that just a few weeks ago, Tony could barely take a few steps. He is such a strong and determined boy, and we are so proud. This new high-tech glove translates sign language into speech in real time is the Getty News headline courtesy of Rob Pachetta with CNN, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A glove that translates sign language into speech in real time has been developed by scientists. The wearable device contains sensors that run along the four fingers and thumb to identify each word, phrase, or letter as it is made in American Sign Language. Those signals are then sent wirelessly to a smartphone, which translates them into spoken words. The researchers also added adhesive sensors to the faces of people used to test the device to capture facial expressions that are a part of American Sign Language. Lead researcher Jun Chen stated, Our hope is that this opens up an easy way for people who use sign language to communicate directly with non-signers without needing someone else to translate for them. In addition, we hope it can help more people learn sign language themselves. City of Sydney completes switch to 100% renewable supply is the Getty News headline courtesy of Michael Meisengarb with Renew Economy, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. The City of Sydney has officially switched to 100% renewable electricity, with its power supplies now flowing from wind and solar projects from across regional New South Wales. The city will now source the equivalent of all of its electricity consumption from renewable sources. This includes a new 3-megawatt solar farm built in partnership with the not-for-profit Repower Shoalhaven Initiative. The City of Sydney will also source power from the 120-megawatt Bowman Solar Farm and the 270 megawatt Sapphire Wind Farm. Sydney Lord Mayor Clover Moore stated, We are in the middle of a climate emergency. If we are to reduce emissions and grow the green power sector, all levels of government must urgently transition to renewable energy. California condors return to Sequoia National Park for the first time in 50 years is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Yesenia Funes with Gizmodo, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. For the first time in 50 years, California condors have returned to Sequoia National Park. This sighting signals that federal efforts to bring the California condor back from near extinction are working. By 1985, only nine condors remained in the wild. Through a captive breeding program, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was able to help the population grow, and now more than 127 are believed to roam California. Another part of helping this species in the region is informing hunters about how to be careful in maintaining practices that will allow the birds to thrive. The condors return to Sequoia National Park signals that California condors may be returning to their historical habitat there, but park officials haven't witnessed that just yet. However, they did find two birds hanging out atop Morro Rock. LA Artist Donates 1,800 Paintings to Brooklyn Hospital is the Getty News headline courtesy of Valentina Delicia with Hyperallergic.com and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Recently, a truckload of 1,800 paintings made by Los Angeles-based artist Michael Gitz arrived at Interfaith Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. There was one for every single worker to receive their own artwork. Titled Strangers to No One, the premise of the project was painting a flower for each employee at the New York City Hospital. 
The abstracted acrylic on canvas works were painted using a syringe, a technique Gitz has employed for years but has taken on a special significance for this series. Gitz's message to hospital staff is this. We love you. Everybody loves you. You're loved by millions of people you'll never even meet. You're not a stranger to anyone. These flowers are from everyone. Doggy deliveries help Colombian shop during pandemic is the Giddy News headline. And this was brought to our attention by 83 Chris Aaron. And Chris is a subscriber and a friend. And congratulations, Chris, on recently hitting 1,000 subscribers on your channel. So if you guys could check out 83 Chris Aaron, we'll include a link to his YouTube channel. And this Giddy News is courtesy of Luis Benavidez and Manuel Rueda with AP News, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. An eight-year-old chocolate Labrador named Eros trots through the street several times a day with a straw basket in his jaws, taking vegetables, fruit, and packaged foods to customers of the El Porvenir Mini Market. Eros's owner, Maria Botero, opened a mini market four years ago in her hilltop neighborhood, and the dog started to accompany Botero and her kids to make deliveries. Eros remembers the names of customers who have previously rewarded him with treats, and with some practice, he has learned to go to their houses on his own. Botero sends the merchandise with a receipt in the basket, and then the customers pay through a bank transfer. He's quite a glutton, Botero said, continuing, he won't leave your house until you give him a treat. Finland ends homelessness and provides shelter for all in need, is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Presenza London and a link to the source will be included in the description below. One decade ago, you could see tent villages and makeshift huts standing between the trees in the parks of Helsinki. There were too few emergency shelters, and many affected people did not manage to get out of the homelessness cycle. They couldn't find jobs without a housing address, and without a job, they couldn't find housing. In 2008, the Finnish government introduced a new Housing First policy for the homeless. Homeless people get a flat without any preconditions. Social workers who have offices in the residential buildings help with financial issues such as applications for social benefits and are available for counseling. Since then, the number of people affected has fallen sharply and Finland is the only country in Europe where homelessness is in decline. Juha Kakinen, director of the Y Foundation, stated, It was clear to everyone that the old system was not working. We needed radical change. All right, that's it. I would love to hear what you think about this edition of Giddy News. And if you have a positive news story that you'd like for me to share, please include a link in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.